Aloha. I'm Chef Mark Noguchi, but you can call me Gooch. Saimin is a noodle dish that is unique to us in Hawaii. This comfort food's name is when you squash together the Chinese word sai, meaning thin, and men, meaning noodle. Not only is saimin ancestrally tied to Chinese food, saimin is also inspired by Japanese ramen, Okinawan soba, and Filipino pansi. Today, a great bowl of saimin still has all the basics, chasu or spam, green onion, and egg. On this episode of Simon Says, we go to the majestic island of Kauai with pastry chef genius Belinda Leong of Bee Patis. <laughs> We're hooking up with Kauai's culinary mayor, Chef Marco Yama of Mark's Place, where he'll take us to Hanapepe where salt is still farmed by hand, the same way it's been done for generations. And it's a visit to Kilauea Noodle Company, where Larissa and Lorena Nebre practice their craft of making Simon noodles. Finally, late lunch with local musician and composer Kepa Cruz at the iconic Hamuras. Whenever I have business in Waikiki, I always stop at B Patisserie for a kugi naman, the Breton-originated European pastry that Belinda is credited for bringing to the American masses. Despite a 2018 James Beard Foundation Award for Best Pastry Chef and countless other accolades, she hasn't lost her cool, affable nature. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Oh. Do you remember the first time you ever had one in San Francisco, right? I do. I do. Did you and Chris? Yep, it was about six hours before we had to yep. board a plane. Did you ever eat some things that like, immediately take you back? Yep. Right? So you eat and it brings up a memory. It felt like I remember walking in the door, we're on the far side of your counter, and Chris was kind of like, you know, he was like, you know, that's Belinda. You had your head down, and you looked up, and you gave that Belinda smile, and you gave her my first cookie one. Actually, that's the most exciting for me, when someone has their first cookie one. You put cooking them on the map. No, you know what's funny was that I never, when I went to the culinary school, I, was, I wanted to be a chef. Like, I wanted to be savory. I was just like, oh wow, that's something different. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look this up. And so I looked it up, researched it, and then I just figured, I just tried to start making it. And I would just kind of fiddle with flowers, fiddle. I, I probably wasn't doing my folds correctly. I didn't know. And I just kept doing it, and then that's why I only have, I have my own style. I think it's a lot lighter. Um, When's the first time you had Simon? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's, I think Chris was the first one to introduce me to. Because after yeah? Vintage Cave, after we did that event, we went to Zippy's. <laughs> and I had Simon. And then from then, I just, every time I come back to Hawaii, I always get a bowl of Simon at Zippy's. Yeah, I always get a, um, a large Chili. one ton min. No, I get a large wonton made with extra wonton. My parents make wonton. No! Yeah. My parents' company you... is a manufacturing plant, but then they just, for 15 years, they've been, they've been making wonton too. What'd you grow up eating, like noodles wise? Have you ever, as a kid, taken those instant noodles, crush, crush them, it up, and put, put the those powder? Down? <laughs> <laughs> on the bus stop all the time. <laughs> She's talking about that. Okay, starting with that. Class. Then... <laughs> Simon noodles. If you look at the history of local food, and you look at the genealogy of it, um, so much of it comes from like plantation times. And if you look at like our ancestors, right, they immigrated, right, to Hawaii yeah. to work. And of course, you want to keep eating what you ate back in your home country, yeah. but you may or may not have all the ingredients. So you know, our ancestors who are resilient, hardworking, creative folk may do with what they have. Noodles have Chinese origins, right? Yeah. Everything came from that side. So you take that. You have Japanese culture who wanted to inject. Um, you know, their flavors, it's why, you know, if you see Simon Dash is real simple, yeah. it's like katsuo, right, or shrimp. And then, you know, maybe at that time they didn't do a, you know, a soft egg or what have you, but you knew how to have scrambled egg. There was spam. So you put all those little things together, the very basic of frugal cooking, and Simon is born. Yeah. That's what it My Simon growing up from my mother, um, from my grandmother, so it was, um, noodles from Hamura Simon, where we're gonna go. And it was, my mom made an awesome dashi, which is like shrimp and katsubushi. And then it was spam, 
uh, scrambled egg, green onions, and a couple of bokeh. So you ready? Okay. Ready to go to Koi? Yeah, I've never been. Well, it's... I'm really excited. <laughs> so where, where are we going? Okay. So we're actually going to meet up with, uh, he's a mentor of mine, his name is Mark, Chef Marco Yama. His place, called Mark's Place, is this little hole in the wall, just straight local food. Okay. Um, he is the mayor of Hawaii. He's like what I aspire to be 10 years from now, <laughs> you know? But, and when you meet him, you see what I mean. And the man has just got so much aloha. It's unreal. Kauai used to have a Zippies, but Hurricane Iniki ended that eating opportunity in 1992. So before we get on a plane, we're stopping for some omiyage. <laughs> chef Marco Yama wanted a chicken chili plate, and what chef wants, he gets. I call him Kauai's mayor because everyone knows him and everybody loves him. His humble plate lunch spot, Mark's Place, consistently wins best of awards year round. And he's so cool, he rolled up to pick us up with a truck full of gas and a cooler full of beer. Our first stop is in Hanapepe, a small neighborhood on the south side of Kauai. The community of Hanapepe still maintain the ages old practice of farming salt by hand a painstaking and meticulous craft that endures today. Oh, hi, good. Good. Hi, good. Nice man. How you doing? How are you? Nice to meet you. Hi. 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 Why don't we walk in and I show you guys what we have and what we need to do to get this thing uh, prepared to see the salt in a couple of months. Tommy, hello. We do the salt uh, together. Thomas, well, I'm glad you're here with us today. So you can put in your oh, this is a <laughs> This is really special, eh? Yeah. The whole crew. Yeah, well, we got a few guys, but I'm so glad Tom came down today. Once this gets going, all summer we're together down here, uh, working. If we're not harvesting, we're adding adding water from the wells, from the punawais, and we have to have somebody every two, three, four days at the most come add water because of the uh, evaporation. Yeah. Huh? As it evaporates, you have to take from the waikus, which is the holding ponds, you put into the into the beds, the salt beds. Then you gotta refill the waikus with the from the punawais, which is the wells. This is uh, something that I'm doing via my wife's dad, who was doing this, I'm gonna guess, 80, 90 years ago. The tradition is important, we wanna keep this going. So when I can't do it anymore, we're handing this down to the kids. Gonna get a nice salt is really pika. It's got this amazing that minerality right? that's almost spicy. And what I get from this is, it's almost umami here. I'm trying to, I don't yeah, necessarily get like okay, sweet. No, I like to hear different people's uh, But it's almost it. as if I was um, sucking on a piece of like katsu bushi or something, or like 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 really good dried off food. I know how it comes out. I know, I, I know the feeling, yeah. You know, I like the texture. Uh, right? Yeah. In, the, in the restaurant world, everybody wants, oh, fancy salt from here, fancy salt from there. I'm like, well, I don't need any of that. I'm like, <laughs> We got, we got good salt right here. We got right good here. salt right here. We yeah. definitely do. What? Oh my god! Oh my god! That's awesome! Oh my god! That's awesome! I've never <laughs> seen salt for them. I saw you tasting some. I ate a shrimp. You got a shrimp? I didn't eat a shrimp. It was, did you get like umami? Oh, no. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Get ready for lunch pretty soon, but we're gonna go see our friends making noodles. Let's go. Hi. I remember the exact moment I heard about Kilauea Noodle Company. It was four years ago, and I just finished an event called Eat the Invasives in Waipa. A guest was chatting with me about noodles when she asked me, Have you ever heard of Kilauea Noodle Company? Replying that I had not, I researched them when I got back to Honolulu learning that they were a small family business, maintaining full-time jobs, engaged in noodle production all night long out of a passion for this craft, and I was determined to use their noodles the next year. You saw the, the nice yeah. gardens? Yeah, so you know this is still a real local town. So, hui! How's it? What's up, CrossFit? 
そうだ、ね、Nice to see you! Yeah! Hi! 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 Welcome to our shop. Exactly. <laughs> Hello. Aziz. Hi, Dave. How are you? Well, I love your noodle. You know, I was, yeah. I was real. I feel fortunate that I got to meet you guys a couple years ago. And you know, <laughs> I remember just sending you a message. Hey, yeah. like random. I totally like cold called them. Just like, hey, I'm you know I'm a cook from Oahu. A and cook. I'm doing, a cook. Right? I'm cook. doing this <laughs> thing. And they're like, yeah, sure, we can make it. And then, yeah, I tried. I'm like, oh my god. Game changing. Yep. So this is like a twice a month, Paul Hana. We come here in the evening, get as much done, you know. So we some nights if there's tons of orders, we try to keep it now like 50 and below, so that we're not in here for hours and hours. Yeah, or we do not work. Totally different from each of our day jobs. Yeah. So it kind of brings us in here. I work in the fuel industry. I'm a government worker. Washer. So you never had one of her cooking months? Never, never. Okay. We gotta explain it to what it is. Okay, so it's a cuisinant. It's a specialty from Brittany, France. Um, sort of like a caramelized croissant. Mmm, crunchy. Yeah, like life changing. Take a big bite. Oahu. Isn't it awesome? I mean, how? <laughs> we don't really know. And where'd you get it? Um, our uncle owned it. He had bought it from a, a Chinese noodle maker on the on Oahu, mm -hmm. and brought Ooh. it back home. And so he was running noodles for like he says he put his kids through college. You know, we do get all the questions. Are do you sell gluten free? Do you oh. have <laughs> do you use organic <laughs> flour? And, you know, no, you yeah. can't have a good salmon or egg noodle without that. Bite. Yep, and yep. you need the gluten for that, so yep. agree. We're craftspeople, you know, we're journeymen and craftsmen. Yeah. Like this is what we do. And I'm sorry that it doesn't serve <laughs> everybody's needs, yeah. but like you <laughs> said. Gluten free is not you know, that. Get, get rice noodles, not the Latino You have to enjoy eating it yourself, mm -hmm. you, you know, making it. So my Auntie Colleen and Auntie Joanne of uh, Villegas, and Auntie Colleen's from Kauai, and I guess the, she's cousins with Doc Morris guys. Mm. So, smoky time. They would always, like, probably two or three times a month, we'd go back to Kauai, come back. So we would always have a box of, of Hamura Saimi noodles in our freezer. And I feel like, you know, I, I know I took it for granted because, like, we would eat it sometimes, like, every day. Even times we didn't want to, right? <laughs> like, oh, and then think about it now, I'm like, oh, what? We Can always had, it? right, we always had a case of yeah. noodles, you know, in our freezer at any given time, you know? Yeah. So I like life goals now. I always have a case of noodles, but I will feed my kids it every day. It's your new hashtag. What? Case of noodles. Yeah. It's <laughs> Not every day. Referring to my size. <laughs> Heading back south, we arrive in Lihue, where Hamura Saimin is located. Over 60 years old, Hamura's is most definitely a multi generational institution of noodles. And lucky for me, besides Marco Yama, Kauai native Kepa Cruz had the time to join us and hang. Musician and composer, I feel pretty privileged to say that he composed the soundtrack for Simon Says. Kauai's Mecca, Amura Saimi. The place of here. Please. How long have you been in here? Uh, how old am I? 25. Yep, at least 25 years. At least 25 years of here. But as far as I can remember, as always of here as a young kid, you know. You get, you get a treat to go out to dinner, let's go to Hamura's. That was a place to go. Yeah. It brings back memories. The menu was a lot smaller before. Yeah. But the noodles and the broth is all the same, and um, it's just it's an iconic place of area of Hawaii. Hello. Oh! Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Elena, <laughs> you're a chef mark already. How's it going? How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How was it? I thought it was going to be a little bit. How is this? How is this? So you too. 
You been coming here since Smoky Thai? I've come here my whole life. One of the great hidden gems of Koi. Yeah, well, with social media, not so hidden anymore. I know. That's all. Friday night, coming in here, be real tough to get a table to walk Girl. in and just sit down. You'd probably be doing one of these for about 20 minutes. Oh, you guys can leave. Oh, sorry. Are you leaving? No. But uh, it's always worth it, for sure. When I was at school at um, Kamehameha with Ito, before going back to the airport, I told my dad, oh, stop over here real quick, and pick up a little to-go pail, bring that thing all the way back on the plane, back to the dorms, and the thing was like currency. Okay, who like trade? Who get Molokai hot bread? Hot bre like trade hot bread? Okay, I got hummers right here. <laughs> trade. You know, that's such a really cool cultural snapshot that you're talking about because you know, in today's day and age, I think the, the whole island omiyage is different. Well, I grew up in a Japanese plantation camp and I was raised by, raised like, by my Hanai grandmother, um, Ki Inoue. And so, seeing firsthand the experiences of like how food and culture intermingled, I think Hamura Saimin is like a perfect, uh, it's a perfect metaphor for modern Hawaiian local culture because you have elements of Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, um, even like, like Hawaiian stuff and they all come together to create this new thing that we call Simon. We used to come here for dates before. <laughs> See me, I was still coming for dates. Yeah, 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 well, I was still coming for dates. Yeah. Yeah. If my date is, cannot get excited about a bowl of Simon, <laughs> there's no second date. <laughs> so I got the special. What did you guys get? I got the special too. Special? I got the special. Extra, two extra one time, two, two meat steaks. Time. Okay, yeah, meat steak. Meat steak. You gotta get, yeah, you gotta get the terry and the chicken uh, meat steak over here. And then my favorite, my uncle Mike Han used to tell me he's like, dip it in this stuff, which is the red devil. Okay. Um, and it's not really spicy, but it just puts a little bit of flavor on there. Um, Next time you come Oahu, we can make time. Then let's go eat Simon Oahu. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, bro. I love that it's like straight roast pork. You know, not. Everyone just trust it. That rolls for. Yep, that's rubber soda. <laughs> yeah, but then so what I do is I like um. When I get the wonton, I, I dip the bottom of the spoon in the, in the mustard. Really? Oh yeah? Yeah. That was the right, you know like, you get the whole... Yeah. Yeah. 